Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hey Shady Lady, and today we're gonna do a super quick tech related tutorial, and I'm going to walk through Streamlabs OBS and regular OBS and show y'all how to add stream labels to your overlays. And stream labels are just little text sources that will update whenever you have a new follower or a new subscriber. You can use for a new donator. There's all kinds of different ones you can use. For Streamlabs OBS, it is a lot more streamlined, easier to add the various stream labels. For OBS, it's going to be just slightly more complicated. So scrolling through the list, there's donation related, there's top sub gifting related, there's there's cheering or sending bits to your channel related, followers, total follow count, most recent followers, session followers, subscribers, total subscriber account, uh, weekly subscriber points, monthly subscriber count, etc. There's tiltify donations if you're doing charity streaming. There's there's like psychological reasons why you would want to use different ones. So when I have when I see something on screen that's like the most recent donator sent in five dollars and this is their name, I know that if I donate, my name's gonna get to go up on the overlay. But if it's like the most donated ever in the stream of all time, like I as the viewer don't really have the ability to top that probably. I'm not incentivized to try to take that spot. But a recent donation, I get, you know, a little bit of a spotlight there for a second. That's why I choose to go with most recent follower, most recent subscriber, most recent, etc. The only thing where I do a, a bigger view of it is the person who's given the most gift subs in a 30 day period. I do the monthly top sub gifter. And the reason that I do that is because I really like to encourage my community to be generous. And if I am putting a spotlight on the person that is gifting the most gift subs in a month, then it encourages that behavior. So it's totally up to you. Another thing that's very popular for people to use is a subscriber goal or a session subscriber count. This is very useful for a lot of different reasons. When it's shown up on screen, it tells people what it is that you're trying to do. This is why you'll see donation goals. If you don't tell your audience what, your, what goals you're trying to hit, they can't help you hit them. So if your audience knows that you really want to have 10 subscribers that week and that to you means that you're successful in your streaming and that's the goal that you're trying to reach, you'll be surprised at how many people would be willing to try to help you reach that goal. Same thing with the donation goal, like if you're trying to fundraise for new equipment, when people see that you're trying to fundraise for it, they're more likely to, be, to contribute to it. I mean, they can't contribute if they don't know it exists. Sometimes you'll see like maybe you're trying to raise $100 to get a new microphone and you've already gotten maybe $64 raised so there's $46 left to fill that donation goal out. Sometimes you'll see someone come in and they just want that goal to be rounded off. So they're just going to send you the 46 or they might send $6. So it rounds out to an even number. People are very motivated by evening out numbers and donation goals and stuff. I see it happen all the time in charity streams. So that's something to keep in mind for that. I really would recommend not doing more than three or four. I actually don't have these appearing on my main overlays at all. Like my gaming overlays. I've found over time that they're very cluttered. Now, if you're trying to incentivize a very specific behavior, like if you're trying to hit the 50 followers for affiliate requirements, or if you've got a follower goal in mind or a subscriber goal, maybe add one of these stream labels to your gaming overlay, small, tucked out of the way and not obscuring the gameplay or anything. Because if you add like five, six, seven, ten of these, it's really cluttered. It's an information overload. The only place where I really have a lot of this information displayed, I'm going to switch to the scene, is here on my just chatting overlay. And you can see at the bottom, I've got my four Four different ones. The ones that I care about, subscriber, bits, tip, and follower is the shady baby. Up in the top, this is the one that I incentivize the most, almighty gift subber, the person that's gifted the most subs that month. On my just chatting scene where I'm here, it's community focused anyway. I've got the chat up as well. This is typically the scene I switch to when I'm getting rated. So it's like all of the information. I've tried to keep the information organized and not too cluttered, you know, kind of stylized and things like that. On my gaming scene, I'll switch to that. I'm not currently playing a game right now, but I literally am just my webcam. My alerts will pop up on this and I have my caption box. And I've just over time learned that I prefer to have as little going on on the screen as possible when we're doing gaming because it's just too busy for me personally. I think that everyone should learn in their own time. So definitely experiment, try things out, see what you like. You might find that you don't like talking to people about these goals or about these types of things. Anything you put on the screen is going to be a conversation piece with your audience. Audience. So keep that in mind when you're adding stuff onto your overlays. 
So let's go ahead and start with Streamlabs OBS. You're going to want to come into your Streamlabs OBS setup and you're going to want to go into the sources section and add plus to add a new source. When the sources pop up on the right hand side, you need to scroll all the way down on the bottom left. There's one called stream label and you click on it uh, very easy. Then you click the green button for add source. You're going to want to go ahead and do add new source and name it whatever you are going to be using. So we'll call this one recent follower. And you'll immediately have something pop up that's going to show you a bunch of different options. And I mean, there are so many. I'm not even going to try to name them all in this video. For now, I'm going to add a most recent follower. And you can see this pop up on the screen right now. It's completely unformatted text wise. So y'all asked in the last video for me to show y'all text formatting. So I'll include that here. You can see the label template right here with name. The, you keep these little squiggly brackets around the word name because that's what actually shows them up. But you could add anything you wanted to in this like follower in front of it or you could put you could decorate it with little like a little text heart around it I usually build in the phrase most recent follower into my overlay like I design it as a graphic so I just have this text popping up so for now I'm just gonna keep it as the user's name you can use Google fonts if you prefer if you're like me and a graphic designer and you have a million fonts already downloaded you might not need to use Google font so I'm just gonna go ahead and select a cute font style you want something that's legible keep in mind that using a very fancy beautiful script might look nice to you but nobody can understand what it says it's it's hard to read text transform is up to you I do typically like full uppercase or full lowercase if you click on the vertical box right here it's going to change it instead of being horizontal or flat it's going to be up and down tall you want to choose your font color based on stuff that's already existing in your overlay or your brand colors something that complements and looks nice scroll down a little bit you can change the opacity if you prefer there's a gradient effect which is a lot of fun to play with actually um, and makes everything look a little bit more fancy so a gradient is just it slowly fades from one color to another color gradient opacity so you can even like alter that a little bit gradient direction is the angle that it's facing so 90 degrees is going to keep it flat background color is totally up to you I prefer to keep it transparent myself which is why I have the opacity set to zero you might want a solid block around it or it could fit in with your overlay to give it a background color alignment is just left center or right vertical alignment is how it sits in the actual box so if it's at the top of the element at the center or at the bottom I don't find that that the center um, alignment or the vertical alignment is super important unless you are really messing with the the dimensions of this to fit in specifically with an overlay it could come in handy in certain overlays especially when it comes to adding a filter that will make this scroll an outline will simply add it, an outline around the word itself if you do that I would recommend changing the outline size to a pretty large number if you're gonna scale it down it's hard to actually see it on a small scale um, and then you can choose the color for the outline as well um, and you can change the opacity of the outline chat log mode I believe is just how many lines can appear, how many different names can appear in it. I don't ever mess with that. Custom text extents is when you have a very specific dimension that you are trying to make sure this fits in. I do use custom text extents all the time. So I will just change the width to whatever fits in. Like when I'm doing overlays, I will change it to whatever fits in what I'm trying to reach. And you'll, you'll find when you start messing with this, I would first of all, probably turn off the wrap because that's going to make it create a second line. And I would just try to match this around to wherever the full word is going to show and keep in mind some people's usernames are longer than others so this could cause the word to get cut off this is something that I wouldn't recommend doing unless you know what you're doing unless you are a little bit more advanced with graphic design and stuff like that when you use these custom text extents you're probably going to find that you do need to come back up and change the alignment to a centered change the vertical alignment you might need to start messing a little bit more with things like that so this is definitely something I would recommend for more people that are a little more advanced with graphic design for now you could just keep that turned off and it's always going to be the size of the word no matter how long the username is it will automatically expand if you're trying to keep something in a very specific dimension like on your overlay you have a little spot that you made for that that's when you would want to use the custom text extent and you can do this with every single different element that you would want to add and that's going to wrap it up for the Streamlabs section for the OBS section when you're adding this it's going to be similar to how you do in Streamlabs OBS you have to do a plus right here okay so you'll need to log into Streamlabs 
tabs and then you're going to come over to the left hand side and you need to click on all widgets and then scroll down a little bit to stream labels. You're going to actually have to download an app from them. So click on whatever operating system you use, launch the setup and you're going to need to connect with whatever you're streaming off of. So connect with your Twitch, log in, and then you're going to need to authorize Streamlabs to access your Twitch account. Okay. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a directory on your computer of a bunch of different text files of all of the different labels that you could have. So you need to choose an output directory on your computer. I would recommend probably just in your root documents folder, somewhere easy to find, easy at least for you to remember where you set it up as, because you're going to have to use that later in your OBS so that you can actually add it. Okay. So I saved mine to the, this, here's something maybe you shouldn't do. I saved mine to my root documents folder and you can see now just in my documents, there's all of these all of these text files. So maybe you want to go ahead and create a subfolder when you're installing this new folder and call it like stream labels so that you don't have all of these text files uh, right in the top of your documents. So keep that in mind when you're setting this up. So now you can see that you have a little event list essentially here. You can drop down and filter and choose what it is that you wanna see in the list. And you can have this opened up while you're live so you can keep track of what the alert was for. So you can close this, we don't actually need it, but we do need that root directory that you saved all of this to. You at least need to know where it is because we're gonna come into OBS and you're going to do very similar to stream Labs OBS, except they don't have the widgets built in here. So you're going to click the plus sign under your sources and you're going to add a text file. Name this something new that you recognize. So we'll call this new follower. Then we need to read from file right here. You need to click read from file, click browse, and you're going to need to navigate to that folder that you just set up. And you can see these are labeled pretty logically. So it should be easy for you to find what you're looking for. I'm looking for most recent follower. Let's see most recent so resubscriber, subscriber, most recent follower right there. So we'll double click that. You can see the names popping up and it's just like on Streamlabs OBS. You have the ability to fully customize this choosing your font. Keep in mind to try and make it easy to read. You can choose your font color. You can set it up with a gradient as well so that it's got a nice little fade effect going on. You can change the opacity just like we were doing in Streamlabs OBS. You can change the gradient direction, change the background color, background opacity, all of this. You have the exact same features that you add in Streamlabs OBS. So we'll go ahead and click OK and you can see we've got the recent follower now. That's how you add a stream label. You can do that for as many different ones as you like. Now, if you're using stream elements instead of stream labs, it's a little different. So we'll come to stream elements and log in. You're gonna log in and you're gonna wanna come over here on the left to streaming tools and do my overlays. And you're going to need to actually create a blank overlay and design this in stream elements. So I'm not going to go through this entire process with y'all. Over here on the left, it's just add a widget and come into labels, subscribers, your latest subscriber, and that's gonna add it right up here at the top. You can change how it appears just like we were doing previously with the stream labs. It's all built in directly into this. And then at the very end, once you You've added what you need to and it's set up and adjusted the way that you want it. You're going to save up here in the top right and you're going to copy the overlay URL and in OBS when you're trying to add this you'll add a browser source and we'll call this stream labels since that's what this is and you're going to add the URL here browser source and then you can see that that's pulled in. Clearly make sure that you format it the way that you want so that it looks nice. This would be transparent. I just don't have anything set up on this overlay. I just wanted to show you all how to add it and the final thing that I want to show you all is actually something that I really prefer as far as having like a nice simplicity. I'm going to show you in Streamlabs OBS. You click the plus on a new source and you're going to come over here on the right side and you're going to look for something called an event list right here. I'm going to add a new source event list and you get this pop up here that is it's every event and you can choose what's what which ones show up in it like you can check them on and off so you could have only your subscription show up there only follows only raids whatever it is and there's different visual settings you can do for it i prefer slick i just think it's nice and minimal and then of course like make sure that the colors are set up you can change the animation for it the fade out over time this is a very minimal way to show all of them all of the stream labels in one you can even click on the little anchor point 
points and hold the alt button and you can crop it down so that it's only these like top three that are showing. I think this is a super sleek way of showing the stream labels without having to make a bunch of different individual ones for everything that's happening on your channel. So that's another option as well. Okay, and I think that's gonna wrap this video up. Sorry, as usual, my videos always run super long. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about what I explained or if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see. I think that I'm going to be doing a full OBS, Streamlabs OBS specifically, because that's what I'm, I'm the most familiar with, a full Streamlabs OBS breakdown. And I know that I'm getting a lot of requests for a chat bot, how to get a chat bot running. And there's a lot of requests as well for a Discord tutorial. So I'm gonna do my best to try to, to make sure that I can get to all of these things. I'm trying to make sure I have one video up a week. I might even need to do two videos a week to make sure that I'm getting to everything. Is that something y'all might be interested in? Maybe I could upload on like Mondays and Thursdays or something and just try to keep pumping out some of these tech tutorials. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's it. Um, I do want to say thank you all so much for the support on my channel and a huge thank you to my fan house subscribers who helped me be a full-time content creator. Um, if y'all'd like to get your name mentioned here at the end of the video, check out my fan house link in the description below. Yeah, maybe I'll catch y'all on my stream sometime. Uh, have a wonderful life, <laughs> day, time, whatever it is for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.